good morning friends it's Tracy and Boris and Violet from Nova Scotia Living it's about I got, a, I got a hair stuck on my phone it's about 20 after 6 I have a coffee here today is Tuesday and yeah I hit snooze a bunch of times but we did get up it's supposed to be rainy snowy today but right now it's just kind of spitting outside. I took these guys for a walk. And now I'm going to have my coffee. We've got some food to work with today. I have a roast beef that's already cooked in a slow cooker. Two roast porks and a... God! A slow cooker that need to be dealt with. And then I have some hamburger and... Um, a couple more packs of bacon. And then we've got to take out some more meat from one of my deep freezers. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. I'll be back once I have my coffee. I'll be a little more on the ball. All right, guys, I was just out. The kids caught the bus. I'm going to go in and wake up uh, Mally and Mazaya. I was talking to the other mom. Ann and Elliot walked by, said hi to them. Violet and Boris are right there. I didn't bring them out because it's a bit fussy, like it was sprinkling out and um, they go a bit berserk first off and we were just in a rush. They'll come out when uh, Messiah and Mally catch the bus. Are you guys mad at me? I'm sorry. I am sorry. Good morning, turn up. Tell your mommy to get up. Hi, buddy. Did you have a good sleep? Oh, he's coming to see us, you guys. Isn't he so handsome? He looks so smart. Yes, I'll blow little fishy kisses at you, too. Mwah. My little grandbaby fish. So handsome. All right, it's 7.37, I woke the kids up. I have five towels to hang up and I brought out some dry, clean laundry. I put some stuff in the dryer from the wash I put in when I first got up. So we're gonna fold that up after I hang these up. I did those baskets. There's stuff in the dryer though. I'll have to fill it after. These two are playing around. Between that and a hot dog bun, like a stuffed hot dog bun, uh, that's what they've been playing with today. But Messiah came down and got her little pile. And the rest is just going to sit there till the kids get home. Or I might put it in a basket and just leave it at the bottom on the steps. <sighs> yeah, something like that.
All right, guys, I had to refill the bird feeders. <clears throat> so they're all topped up. My fingers are friggin' frozen. But yeah, I put niger seeds in those tall, skinny yellow ones and then just mixed bird feed in the other ones and sprinkled some on the ground for the pheasants and stuff or squirrels or whatever wants to come and eat it. I don't care. Woo, so that's good. I'm outside with the big kids. I'm not getting you. There's Violet and Boris. I'm gonna go around with a shovel and pick up poop. All right, here comes Sebastian. Did you get your money? Okay, love you. Have a good day at school. I'm still on poop patrol. Look at, just look at those fools. Look at those fools, fools. Now it's hard to find poop when it's like the color of damn leaves, like, for goodness sakes. If I miss any, at least we'll fertilize the ground. Oh, and it rained so much the past couple days, it's probably pounded into the ground. I just do this every couple of days. Um, in the summer or spring, oh, I see something just doing it. All right, I just had a carbonated water. I had such a busy morning yesterday. I'm going to kind of take it a bit easy this morning. But, oh, there's a squirrel. And there's a girl pheasant under the trampoline or by the trampoline. And there's a bunch of little birds out there. Oh, I think they're happy. Oh, my tree is filled with little birds. Well, not filled, but there's quite a few out there. Excellent. Excellent. I had to dump off some of the shelves of the the mixed bird feed because they had water in them. They do have strainers, but I guess it gets blocked a bit. But I put quite a bit of seed on the ground and yeah, they'll be able to fill their bellies for a little while, which is nice. Like look on that one. I'll try to hold it still. Come on. Anyways, they're out there having their brekkie. There's the boy one. I don't know where the girl went, but he's out there having his breakfast now too. I just swept my kitchen floor and wiped my table off from the breakfast mess. Oh, I'm going to go get that pulled pork slow cooker um, that I did yesterday and see if that pork is shreddable. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Boris, I'd appreciate you not putting your head on the table. Okay? Or you're going to have to go out. I'm just giving you the warning now. Alright. I did this yesterday, if you didn't see that video. Uh, there's one picnic shoulder roast, so there's a bone in it, and then I had one. I think it was probably part of a tenderloin I cut up in chunks. And froze it. Um, this is cold. I wish it was warm, but I'm too lazy to warm it up. Let's try this. I will save the juices too. I'm just going to put it in a big Ziploc bag and freeze it, label it, and freeze it. There. That shrunk down. I hope this one's just kind of shreddable. This one's good. We'll have a pulled pork with some coleslaw. One of these days, I don't got the stuff to do all that, so I'm just going to freeze it, but at least now it's cooked. And it'll be good. Put some toasted buns. Boris, I mean it. He's right there. Oh, good boy. By what's laying under the table. Good job, kids. Good job. 
Yeah, so the kids all went for school. Um, folded that laundry. I didn't go around to see if any, there's any straggle stuff around. Just put another load of laundry in. If there isn't, I'll do one of the kids' beds. And that'll be done. Let me just think. I don't know. I'll give Dad a call today, see how he's making out. And, yeah. Uh, at some point today, I will go through one of my freezers and take out some more stuff so we can actually cook stuff tomorrow. So... I do have some hamburger I need to use up today. I'll use the stuff I took out of the freezer first. I'm thinking I might make a couple meatloafs. Mally's going to make a meatloaf too, but we'll see. We'll see. I could do that, cook it, and then freeze it. And that would be a nice meal with some hot with potatoes and some veggies. Yeah, that would be nice. I'm so glad we did those breakfast sandwiches, though. They didn't have them this morning. They had a chocolate chip muffin. But, uh, uh, Boar, stop. It's chewing on this chair. There's so many teeth marks in this chair. <laughs> but I'm sure you have noticed none of my chairs at my table match. I don't think I've ever had a matching set. Augustus has matching chairs, but I'll buy used chairs, um, you know. $5. I think I bought three of these chairs for $15, but none of them match, but that's okay. It serves a purpose, and that's all I need. This would be easier if it was warm. Some of it's shreddable, some of it's just coming off in chunks, but it'll work. Once it all gets heated up and soaking in that sauce, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So, that's a big old hunk of fat. But, no, I swept the floor. I wiped my table off. I got the fire going. Uh, we brought in a bit of wood, so that's good. Alright, there's this little piece right here. Wasn't too worried about this, but it's just the other one with the big bone in it. I don't know. And same with roast beef. It depends on the cut. And I don't know the names of cuts and what's tender and what's not. And uh, shreddable and what's not. But we're just going to make it work. There's might be enough pork here for two uh, pulled pork. Because you don't need a whole lot on a hamburger bun. And that way I could get two meals out of it. We'll see. I will take the, like there's a big dried piece of fat there, you know how it gets solid. I will take that out. Alright, here comes the big sucker. See, I am going to take that fat cap off. Ugh, I don't want that in there. Alright, this isn't too bad. This certainly had more fat than that tenderloin. I do this, and then I have a roast beef out in the porch. Now he's like, well, what are you doing with that roast beef? I said, I don't know. I could either freeze it. She was like, well, can we make subs with it? I said, yeah. So I'll take it out and work with it, see what it's like to have roast beef subs because I bought those sub buns yesterday. And I never thought to get, like, sub meat or sandwich meat. So genius, Tracy. But uh, roast beef subs or a hot toasted uh, roast beef cheese sautéed onions, toasted sub in the oven like open faced that would be good <sighs> that certainly would be tasty that with some pickles and mustard haven't done something like that in a long time uh, the sub buns I mean those would work but I'd like to get like nice crusty buns uh, and toast them. But 
I am not going to the store to buy more stuff right now. Next time I go into town, I will, but so we'll see. And I did a bunch of chicken wings yesterday. I think there's five drumsticks left. I was talking the other day um, about Saritha because I went over and helped her with her furnace and her basement and her, uh, like when I brought over that space heater, when we plugged it in, it worked a few minutes, but then it threw a breaker. So I had to go down in the basement and switch the breaker back on, unplugged it. But by that time, her furnace was working, so I didn't have to leave it over there. I said I can leave it and it can just go in a different room, like on a different grid kind of thing. Uh, she said, no, the furnace is on, so this is good. I said, okay. But she was telling me about her friend Walter that lives up the road. Um, he's 88, almost 89. He has Parkinson's and he just got set up with home care, like how she has. Somebody goes there, you know, helps with meals and bathing and helps her to bed. Like I helped her out of bed the other day and, um, all that sort of thing. But, uh, apparently he's a stubborn old guy and he didn't want to get all that, but he finally has to. But, um, there was a couple times the home care slipped up. And I'm not saying the individual workers, because they're not the ones that scheduled their outings, but people just didn't show up. And it's like, um, I said that uh, Sarika told them all about themselves in regards to sent an email to the association and the lady brought it to the board and stuff like that. I don't know if anything came of it, but uh, Sarika's very well spoken and sharp as a net attack. And uh, she said... How do you think it makes us feel? We feel left behind and lonely and like we don't matter and stuff like that. And it's true. And Saritha, so, you know, she's smart enough to know to let them know about themselves. But some people aren't. You know what I mean? Like they won't say anything because they might be scared they might lose the service or something like that. Anyways, her friend Walter uh, just got it recently and... Uh, he doesn't have any kids around here, and he does, well, I said he has a stepdaughter that picks up his groceries on Fridays, but he's 88, I think, she said that uh, his stepdaughter's not doing that well herself, and she's up there in age, and, you know, whatever, uh, and I think there's one guy that lives around here that will help him out sometimes, which is great, but uh, I'm just like, Think of all the people that fall between the cracks that don't have anybody or don't know to call or don't know about the service at all or don't have anybody. And anyways, this Walter, I'm just like, when I do meals for Sarika, I want to do some for him because I hate the thoughts of him going out with, you know, not having food. And if nobody shows up and he's not that mobile because he has Parkinson's and his legs give out. You know, like, what's he going to do? If he has a snack beside him, that's all well and good. But what if he wants some tea? What if he wants a hot meal? What if he wants to eat something other than crackers? Or, you know, you just never know. So, when I do something, I'm thinking I could do up one for him. I've never met the guy, I don't think. If I did, it would be years past and I wouldn't know who he was. But I said, let your friend know. And she did. She <laughs> called me shortly after I left her house that night. And I passed along your message to Walter. And he was very appreciative. Cause before she said, he'll probably never ask you. Like, he'll probably never call you to ask because he's too proud and stuff like that. And I get it. I get it. I don't like asking for help either. I, I get it. But uh, he he would be okay with that. And I said, great. But she said, if you ever go, you'll have to just go right in because he can't get up to go answer the door. I said, yeah, well, if I ever go, which I plan on doing, I'll make sure I call you first so you can call him, especially for the first meeting because if he doesn't know me, I don't want to just be a stranger walking in his house and he's unaware. Um, that's a big old fat piece. Uh, so long story short, I'll be doing some meals for him too, and I look forward to meeting him. And I'm telling you, I have friends of all ages. Well, uh, when I lived in the city, I worked at a seniors program. I worked at like a community neighborhood center, and they had kids programs and a food bank there, and seniors lunch programs and stuff like that. Anyways, I pick up seniors and bring them 
to our lunch program and stuff. And I'm telling you, if people, young people think of old people of, oh, they're just grammys and grampies. They, you know, they're old and they don't know. They got the dirtiest minds, the funniest jokes, the, you know, like it, they're just, they're wonderful, wonderful people. And just because they're older doesn't mean that they're not with it. And I love to meet people that can talk about years past. I love listening to stories. I love just having a good old yarn. And if there's people out there that just want to have a voice, just want to have a hello, how you doing? Want to have a hot cup of tea with somebody, even if it's just general conversation. That's a healing element in some people's lives because you need to be connected. You don't want to be alone and think you're just waiting out the remainder of your years and this is as good as it gets. And I can't offer a whole bunch of glitz and glam and stuff, but I can offer you a hot meal once in a while and a conversation. Why not? Anyways, I'm just yammering on. I'm getting down to the bone now. I don't want to get a bunch of fat in here. This is a nice big thing of meat. I think I will uh, maybe do it into two. Because i got to remember, like Tracy, remember, you don't got as big a household as you used to. Like when Medea lived here and Marquise and Kara lived here, you know, those are big people that like food. And I'd always have a lot of food. So I can still make a lot of food, but instead of having one big meal, have two medium-sized meals. So that's good. That's good. I don't think I'll give any of that to the dogs because it has ketchup and brown sugar. Well, white sugar and molasses and apple cider vinegar in there. Um, let me see here. I got out a great big bag, but then I got a box see can I get that without taking my gloves off we'll see the juice in here I'm gonna pour I'll divide it into the two bags all right let's see here oh, these are large bags but I have extra large bags, so I'll do the large bags because I don't think I have any medium bags, so this will have to do. Uh, let me just keep that. I'm just going to use it because I'm going to use these bags up. And pulled pork. And we're good. We're getting there with stuff. Yeah, these are hard to open. And just going back, I'll probably be going back to that, but like when I'm of an age that I don't have my kids at home, you know, and God forbid, but I mean, if I'm never solo and don't have anybody around, I don't think that'll happen, but you know, I would hope that people would look out for us, like be a senior's advocate. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, like there's children's advocates for sure, you know, there's advocates for a lot of different things, but as people get older, you know, I know when mom was in a nursing home a bit, my, if you're new, my mom is an angel now. She was living with ALS, but she transitioned into a better place and all that. And she herself elected to go in that. I, we didn't really want her to, but I mean, she knew what that disease would do to somebody and the loss of faculties completely, physical faculties. Um, she just didn't want us to deal with that. So, you know, that was her life. That's what she wanted to do, but she was around here so we could go visit and she could come to my house and we even have a ramp still down in the basement to put out our front door so she could get in because she was in a wheelchair and stuff. But... She would say there's some people in senior homes that don't have anybody. Like nobody comes to visit them. Nobody. So the only family to have are the staff workers there, and God bless them. 
for doing what they're doing. But, you know, some of them will just sit in a chair all day. And whatever conversation they have, it's just with the staff or some of the other residents. But if a resident can't talk or might not have their mental faculties, they might not be able to talk and they just sit there. But just having somebody to talk to and know cares about them enough to talk to them, that gives a person a little light in their life. And it's insulting for Saritha and everybody else that rely on these associations. And I know these associations work their tails off, but they deserve at least a phone call to say why somebody can't come. If you can't come because of the weather, totally acceptable. If you can't come because there's not enough workers, totally understandable. But then it should go up the chain, all the way up the chain. There's not enough funding. There's not enough workers. There might be a dysfunction somewhere along that chain that needs to be rectified. And if somebody doesn't have a voice to point that out, what you going to do? People are just going to be left behind. And, you know, there's people trying to still stay in their homes. And I get it. They should if they want to. And I know Saritha's hell-bent, and I'm totally with her on that. And I think I would be the same way to never go to a home and to live out her days in her own place. This is like that fat that was on top. Live out her days in her own home where she's happy, where she's comfortable. And where she can get the support she requires. And she does when it's working properly. But when it's not working properly, these people deserve at least a friggin' phone call. At least. And... It just hurts my heart because there's people, I watch documentaries on people, you know, dying alone, living alone in your senior years and you had like a busy younger life, um, just, and, oh, frustrating. And that's not just a, I'm sure that's not just a Nova Scotian little local area. I'm sure this is a worldwide issue. I say I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about things I can't change, but I can change a little bit. I can make a little difference in one person's life, two, two people's life, you know, a little bit. And you do what you can do to help, whether it's donating, volunteering, making a meal, saying hi to somebody on the street that looks lonely or sad. Don't, you know, whether they're seniors or their kids or their middle-aged people what if you live in a place where there's homeless people um and people just walk by people because they look dirty they look they're working jobs that you might not agree with but they're doing what they do to get by and to survive oh lord We just need to learn to take care of one another. I'm not talking politics. I'm not talking nothing like that because that's just open a can of worms. I just can't. It's ridiculous. Uh, there's so many wrong priorities in this world. And let's just get along. Everybody be warm when you need to be warm. Be cool when you can be cool. Be fed when you're hungry. Be clean. Be, you know... Just the basic, basic stuff. Have good health care. You know, seems so straightforward, but it's always so complicated when it comes to any, anybody with a little power and politics and they, they don't see the people on the ground that are left behind. And yeah, if they could just live in, these people's shoes for a day it might make a difference but they don't they don't so 
All right, that's enough. That's enough for me. I'm going to label these pulled pork, yesterday's date. I lay them flat like this in the freezer so I can eventually stack them all up on top. But that looks good. I'll get you off so you can get a picture of them. I need to take a trip to the compost and get the dishwasher going. And then we'll start working with that roast beef. All right, see? That's enough there for a meal, I would say. Yeah, so I'll just look right on that and put it in the freezer. Give this a rinse out, wipe out, and then I'll wash it in the dishwasher. And there's Boris. And there's Violet. And yeah, so that's what we'll do. All right, here's some hamburger I took out of the freezer yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before to defrost? I'm going to scramble it up. I put onion, garlic powder, a little pepper, and a pinch of salt. I think what I'm going to do with that, I have two cans of Manwich. I'm going to make sloppy joe and freeze it. Because I still have two other packs of hamburger in the fridge to cook up. Might make a chili, but I don't have the chili supplies, but it's still okay. If I go to a store, I can get some. I might. I don't know if I have any beans. i got to see. But I'm just going to scramble that up. I brought the roast beef in. I'll wait till that hamburger's done and then I'll handle the roast beef. Alright guys, that hamburger's done. I have it on the stove uh, cooling down. I added the, well I have the cans tipped up upside down. So all the little side bits um, fall down into the hamburger. Once it cools down I'll mix it up a bit. Or I'll mix it up after I'm done with the roast beef. It's only 10.05 in the morning, so we're doing pretty good. We got two freezer meals, and I'm using the same tray I had the pulled pork in. I don't care. I'll leave some. Well, I'll see. It's not a giant roast beef, so I don't know whether this is going to be a freezer meal or not. She was like, can you try to thin it, or like slice it thin? I'm like, I don't know what kind of roast beef it is, so I'll see. She wants it like sandwich meat, but I mean, you can still have it when it's not. If it's not, oh. if it's not, um, you can still have it shredded, of course. I would just maybe suggest warming it up a little bit just to make it softer. Ooh. This knife is super sharp. I have two super sharp knives. We used to have the blue handled ones, but my husband brought two down to butcher a deer um, that he got. And they never came back, so I don't know if we'll get them back, but we got two more that were still in a pack in the laundry room for such a incident. Um, I'm probably gonna poke a hole in this tray, so I won't reuse this one. I'll reuse it for things like this, but not as a freezer meal thing. I just am too lazy to get out a cutting board. But, um, yeah, I could use this as a roast beef dinner, potatoes and veggies and stuff, but that's all right. Or we could make, I'll mention it to Mally what she thinks. I mean, I could do it myself anyways, but, um, what I did in the past was I had, I think, deer meat and, or moose meat. Yeah, it was moose meat and roast beef. And we did wraps and with cheese and probably onions or something like that. And I wrapped them up and froze them like that, and they were perfect. You could take them out and warm them in the microwave or put them in the oven or put them on the grill, like a George Foreman grill. And they were delicious. Marquise ate, I think, most of those. And that would be good. This is coming off not too shabby. I'm going to get a bag going. And I will just fit in the fridge for now. And figure out what I'm going to do with it. But at least it's over the slow cooker. Um, I could save the juices too to make the gravy and freeze the gravy if I wanted to. Or just freeze the juices. What? This is 
the 90% now and let's cut our fingernail off. That's a little bit, that's just, I'm not going to even try because that'll just wiggle too much. Yeah, it's coming out not too shabby. So the dishwasher is going, I didn't get that slow cooker in it, there was not enough room, so the next go around and I'll put that in too. Then I'll go and check to see if there's any straggle clothes to wash. And then I'm probably going to take the rest of the friggin' day off because we will have chicken wings maybe or... Hmm, I could make a breakfast for supper because I do got some cooked sausages and I do got bacon and I do have frozen hash browns in the freezer. I could just fry those up. I might do that. I just won't do that right this second. Misha came home yesterday and was like, I thought we were having breakfast for supper. It was just such a busy afternoon cooking um, those chicken wings and drumsticks and Mally made chocolate chip muffins and the eggs to put in the egg McMuffins, listening to Roy C. Mercer prank calls. He has a playlist on YouTube. It's funny. I used to listen to uh, the Jerky Boys, you know, the Jerky Boys. They have some prank phone calls on there. They're very not appropriate for little ears at all. There's lots of swearing and lots of not good stuff. But quite funny from back in the day. I have a VHS movie, the Jerky Boys movie, up in the attic, and it makes me want to watch it. Actually, our last dog, Frankie Francis Rizzo, he was a character from Jerky Boys. I hadn't, I don't think I've seen that movie in 20 years, but I have the VHS. I don't know, even know if you could buy that now. Maybe you'd have to spend a whack of money on it. But yeah, this little nib is going so well. Yeah, I'm not going to chance it. I'll just kind of shred it up. I think whatever we make for sandwiches, I'll just freeze the rest. I'm not going to hold it in the fridge maybe a day, maybe two at most, and then I'll freeze whatever's left. But There, we're good, we're good. So what I have in the fridge right now is two packs of raw hamburger. I probably will make a chili um, I'll go maybe down to the local store later on this evening and do that up. Mmm, what else do I have? I have some ground pork that needs to be used up. I'll talk to Mally. I don't know if I've made dumplings. Uh, they're not hard to make, like it's just pork or whatever you put in it and then the casing and you steam it and fry it and it's friggin' delicious. Um, Mally likes to explore new recipes, and that was one that she explored, and she made them to perfection. She really did. They looked beautiful. They tasted wonderful. You know, great. So she can, if she wants to, she doesn't have to, do that up. I don't know. She ended up making pizza last night, too. I don't know if I took a picture of it. I think I did. If I did, I'll put it in right here. She did that like later in the evening and the kids all had a slice of pizza. It wasn't like a big mass production, but yeah, she looks up stuff like nobody's business. She really does. She's a natural and Misha's along that path. I offer Messiah to do stuff. She's just really not into that. So I don't ever force things. I do require my kids, I think, to do the basics cooking before they move out. Um, know how to boil water, know how to make hot dogs, fry up hamburger fry up steak or you know like bake something simple in the oven simple but um, Medea 
took the bacon like Mally did. Marquise knows how to cook. Mally's known how to cook. Mazaya, I have to <laughs> encourage her a little bit more. And Maze likes to get his hands in when he can, but he's just young too. But he's going to be right on that bandwagon too, hopefully. On that turnip truck, why not? But they're basic life skills. You should know how to do it. You don't want to go out and have to just eat garbage. Uh, I like myself a bit of garbage once in a while, and my kids do too. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you can cook and you can get a bag of potatoes from the store or a farm market or something like that and scramble up some hamburgers or hot dogs or, you know, stuff like that, fry an egg. It's something some people don't know how to do. Or even if you're not into baking, you can buy those pre-made cookie doughs or, you know, the Pillsbury pop-open things. Do that. Cake mixes. I know how to make um, real cakes, and I used to do that quite often. But the past couple of years, I buy a cake mix. And with that up, when there's an emergency cake required, or a birthday cake, you know, just do that up. You add water, oil, three eggs, and mix it and bake it, and Bob's your uncle. That's it. Um, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a cake. Nothing wrong with store-bought cakes. Um, but if you're short on change, short on cash, buy a $2 box cake mix and do it up. So, whatever. Whatever. To each one. That's just something I like to try to instill in my children, if I can. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and we might have hot roast beef toasted steak and cheese sandwiches when I get the buns that I want to get. So, Alright, I will be back. I'll show you that sloppy joe here in a little bit too. Alright, there's that sloppy joe mix. I'm going to put it in two of those bags and label it. I'll show you when that's all done. All right, two more meals for the freezer. Ooh, okay, guys, I, uh, I've been busy. I edited one video. I have another one to edit. I just got off the phone with Canada Post about those parcels I sent to Maze, uh, Marquise and Kara for Christmas. If you've been following, they didn't end up receiving the Christmas parcels that I had sent to them. They put it in, out an inquiry and all that jazz, and apparently they were delivered January 13th. And I said, I'm not trying to be, like, all greedy, but it's not even about greed, really. But um, do I get a refund for those services I paid for? Because I paid for the services, bought the boxes from Canada Post to send those parcels out so they'd be there before Christmas. They landed in Red Deer December 15th. They still weren't delivered. They got delayed and delivered January 13th. So... I texted Marquise. I said, please check with your build-in manager uh, to find out where you pick up your parcels because my sister sent him a parcel that was returned to her. Dad sent him a card with $20 in it and he hasn't got that. He might have a mailbox that he doesn't know. Uh, yeah, so he's probably working right now, but when he gets home, if he can check with somebody to find out if they have the parcel, well, there's two parcels actually, but I and I put in for a refund for the services. It's not a whole lot of money, but one box was $29.99 plus tax, so it was like $34 and some. One was $21.84. If I can get that money back, because I paid for services for it to be out there before Christmas and it didn't happen. So, you know, what's up? What's up with that? Um, yeah, I've done that. It's 12.51. I have one more video to edit. I was thinking I'd take a nap, but I don't know if I have enough time. I could. Violet and Boris are up here. That stuff's in the freezer. And the roast beef's in the fridge. I still didn't do any laundry, but I've been busy. I've been do busy doing this kind of stuff. This kind of stuff. So, anyways, I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, it's 154. <coughs> oh. um, these are the hash browns I had in my freezer. I'm going to do them up. I'm going to use bacon fat to fry them up in. And we'll have bacon and sausages and eggs and hash browns for supper. All right, guys. I made those hash browns. I'll show you when I go in. I put some of those frozen diced onions in. 
uh, onion, garlic, salt, and pepper. Uh, and sprinkle it with cheese that I ground up the other day. Oh, just a minute. Oh, Boris had a leaf hanging from his bum. I thought maybe he had an accident and it got all over his backside, but no. No. <laughs> Anyways, yes, I grated cheese the other day. What did I grate it for? Oh, the Alfredo. Uh, the orange cheddar and the white matzah. And I put some orange cheddar on top. Uh, and let it melt down on top. I will open a can of beans. Uh, fry up a couple eggs. I might try to make those round ones, like for the Egg McMuffins, maybe. Or I'll just fry up eggs. We'll see. Misha and Mays won't eat any anyways, but we'll see. So, if we're just waiting for the bus. i got the big boots on. My red jacket is supposed to be 2 degrees right now. I don't know, but it's wet and cold and damp. But the fire's going. Supper is pretty well done. It's just I need to heat up the sausages and bacon. Let me turn you around. Yeah, I'll just heat up the sausages, bacon, and beans. Toast. Oh, I have some leftover English muffins, too. Not the ones that we were using yesterday, but before that, there was some. So, I'll toast some of those to use up some of that. Why not? Um, yeah. Yeah, and there's lots. I did both of those bags of hash browns, so there's lots of hash browns. All the kids like hash browns, so... <clears throat> That'll work out good. They can get their fid, fill and uh, hopefully be satisfied for the most part for food. They can just get snacks and stuff themselves afterwards in the evening if they want. Whatever. Oh, I just rehung this up here. It's a little lower than it was before, but I'm not going to go dig out a ladder. I put some seeds in there and down here. Now I have two suet things, and it's on that tree up there around a branch, so I'm going to use that poop shovel to try to get it down so I can load up the suet things. <sighs> Wieners! Alright, I have two suet things that knock down easy peasy. Oh. The bus still isn't here, so might as well make myself useful. This can fit two, and I got two. Hey, we did it. Perfect. I don't know if there's a certain side you're supposed to face out, but whatever. It's there. <sighs> Perfect. Now I've got to bring in my garbage. Okay, I will. All right, bye. Oh, there's Mace. Did Misha come? Oh, she must have stayed for basketball. I guess I will be going in. She said she wasn't going to stay. Okay. Oh, how was school? That's good. Well, we're going to have to take a trip to town. We'll have to take a trip to town after. Or I can wait till the kids get home. Oh, jeez. All right, there's those hash browns. So they're all ready to go. Ooh. All right, guys, I'm in town. I wasn't sure if Misha was going to stay for basketball or not. She said she didn't feel like it today, like she was tired. I said, well, if you really don't want to, you don't have to. But, you know, it's I, she knows the whole spiel, though, you know, if you join a team sport, you should make sure that you show up whenever you can because the team depends on it. But anyway, she ended up staying, which is good. Um, Mally and Mazzara got home. So they're probably going to get their own supper, which is fine. Maze is there. I have Violet and Boris because I have to go into a store. And Misha will want to come in with me. So, yeah, I'm just waiting. She should be out any second now. Oh, here she comes. Little Red Riding Hood. Bye, Maple, she yells. How was B-Ball? Good. Oh, I didn't think you were going to stay. Say that. Yeah, right. Well, don't step on your jacket. I won't step on my jacket. Throw it in the back if you're not wearing it. Did you get any baskets? Yeah. Well, that's good. All right, we're at the big W. I need to get some shoe glue because I can't find the stuff we have at home. And I know where it is in Walmart, so that's why we're going here. And I need some milk. I 
have not checked back in a while. It's 7.20. I just took out some more stuff from one of my freezers. And I still had that ground pork to work with. Tomorrow's the cutoff date. i got to work with it tomorrow. Or it's got to go. So, yes. This is more of a poultry. But I do have some other stuff. So here I have a beef plank steak. Regular 15.84. At that point, it was 20.26 a kg. Another, well, beef flank steak, seventeen thirty, but again, 50% off, of course. You know, you already know. Um, here's some chicken breast, uh, breast, boneless, skinless. Um, it was seventeen eighty four. At that point, it was nineteen eighty two a kg. Um, here's three chicken breasts, and they have bones in them. They don't have skin on them. Uh, 10.04. I don't think this was 50% off. I don't know unless it came off. This is a big thing of turkey pot pie stuff. Love you, hun. I think it was from Thanksgiving. Um, leftover gravy, vegetables, stuff mixed together. So I might make a bunch of turkey pot pies and deliver them to friends and have some for supper. Speaking of turkey... I have a turkey breast, a turkey breast, a turkey breast, and another turkey breast. PC free farm turkey breast split. So yeah, I think these are smaller, so these are probably chicken breasts, I'm assuming. I think. There isn't a package on it, or it came off. Like, it must have had one of these on it. Maybe it's a small, like, that's gotta be a chicken breast, right? It's got to be. Let's get going for us. Um, I found a thing of hamburger. I can't tell if this is freezer burnt or not. I'll wait till it defrosts. But 683. A thing of pork. Sirloin chop. Boneless. 908. 50% off. And then all that ground pork I have to work with tomorrow. So I'm going to defrost this stuff tonight. I was tempted not to. I was like, oh, I'll just take a day off, Tracy. But no. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going to pull up my bootstraps and we're going to do this together. All right. This was 50% off too, I'm sure, because I wouldn't have just bought. There's nothing on here. It probably had one of those and fell off in the freezer. But I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff yet. I might just fry that up. The steak, I might marinate and fry up, maybe. Not sure. Uh, I might make some more chicken Alfredo because I do have some more Alfredo sauce. And Mally asked, if you get more chicken, can you make an Alfredo for supper? And I could do that and just not freeze it. Yeah, I'll have to have to think things through. So anyways, I'm going to set this out on trays in the porch to defrost. It'll still probably be partially frozen tomorrow, but we'll work with it. I just was going to show them this. They're showing me, this is a Home Alone one, but it's some sort of channel that does these. I don't know. This is a Home Alone run, and they did a Grinch run, and there's a Hocus Pocus run. It's it's almost like they do it. Yeah. Anyways, they have to like run and jump and swat away stuff according to the directions and it's they're like they're directions. running through the home alone house and this one which is pretty neat well hey guys it's the next day um i forgot to put an ending on this video so i'm going to put it on now i have been it's 104 in the afternoon i have been busy in the kitchen i can't wait to hang out with you in that video um yeah but yesterday was a good day too getting that stuff done and whatnot um, yeah, I'm just trying to think, what did I do yesterday? I haven't even unloaded my phone to <laughs> edit it up until this point. I just remembered I started today like it was a brand new video, which is cool, but yeah. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me yesterday and Violet and Boris and all that jazz, all that jazz. So I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose. But if not, that's okay too. I still love you. I still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, okay guys, with that, I'm going to say have a good night or have a good morning. And I will. 
see you tomorrow. Bye. Boink.